Yes. And how it can, how it can uh, contribute to both uh, personal and professional development. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we call historical antecedents, what happens prior impacts us in the present and future. I'm going to talk about how to turn law stories into um, usable professional skills. How can we use these law stories if we've taken notice of them and done something about them to help us actually professionally in our, um, in our business environment? And then I just want us to, again, take notice of loss in order to minimize its impact on our own mental health. So um, I think it's going to be a great time today. So thank you again for, uh, for being here um, this afternoon. So let's start. Historical antecedents. Taking notice. It's a fancy word for saying what you've been through in the past, whatever experience it might be, impacts your present and will impact your future. This is useful uh, to know because all of our development in life comes from something that we've been through and whether or not we've learned from it, whether we've internalized it, whether we've dealt with it, whether we've applied it to our lives moving forward. And in terms of loss, this is really, um, I think, crucial because when you think about loss, it's one of those things in our lives that we tend to want to move forward fast and quick and get out of. Because loss hurts. Any type of loss or grief that we're experiencing um, is not enjoyable. And so those things that are not enjoyable, we want to either push aside, uh, push back, or move forward and to get out of our situation. It's not so easy because loss has a tendency to sit for a while in our lives and unless we've done some work through this loss, it actually might be remaining for a while and maybe for um, a long time until we somehow recognized it and to be able to work through it. So everything that we've gone through in the past then impacts our present and future. So again, as I talked about last week, all of those loss stories that have been part of our lives um, have touched us in some way. Um, they've impacted us. They've affected us. And so what are they and how might they then be used to actually perhaps form some resilient uh, traits in us that we can actually use in the future when other lost stories become part of our journey. You know, it's really interesting because those of you who are listening on as business leaders and perhaps you're, um, you know, a manager, or you own a company. You know that uh, when somebody starts with you as a, a new uh, employee, they're learning on the job, and they might bring some experiences with them that help them in their current role, whatever that might be. But they're learning your company, they're learning your products and services, for example, and we know that mistakes will be made. That's part of growth. Um, employees make mistakes because they're learning and they're growing. And it's so easy, I sometimes think, to say, well, man, how many mistakes can this person make before it's enough? But we know that, you know, all those experiences, all those mistakes uh, actually result in something pretty um, amazing. It's called wisdom and experience. And people learn on the job. But learning on the job means that you have to work through those things that put blockades in your life or that push you back. Um, you know, um, things that we've learned um, through our experience that now allow us not to make those mistakes, for example, in the future. And we spend a lot of money as companies uh, with our employees. And so uh, the more experiences they have, the more valuable they will become for us in the future. Well, it's no different with loss. You know, loss, when we um, learn from it, becomes integrated in our life and becomes quite useful for us moving forward, both personally and professionally. Everyone will go through loss, and they will continue to go through loss their entire lives. So if we can then 
help our employees begin to recognize them, to work through them, to see them as experiences that can be integrated into our personal life moving forward and in our professional life, they become gold nuggets for us, really. Instead of things you go, well, not useful, wrong. They are very useful as far as personal and professional development. So how do you turn these lost stories into usable professional skills? Well, a simple question is, what do you... I mean, the, the simple question for me kind of goes back to the customer. You know, when you're selling something or you're providing a service, why does that customer purchase from you? You know, in a competitive world of products and services, there's not much difference between those particular items. You know, a product might have a few more benefits, a few more features, a service might offer a little bit more than the next company. But we know statistically that people often buy something from you because they like you. They appreciate you as an individual, as a person. So stack up two companies against each other, offering the same type of product. Who will that customer buy from? I believe, and I think it's researched as well, that people buy from somebody they like. Do they like you? And there's some very important things that we need to learn through loss that are actually professional skills that we need to use, I believe, in a company. Number one, empathy. Through the loss stories, we learn about empathy. And we know that empathy, a brief definition is, how do you walk in somebody's shoes? That's going through a difficult time. We want to walk in somebody's shoes. We want to be able to understand what they're going through the best that we can. That's pretty special to know that somebody cares for you or is attempting anyways to care for you or to understand you, even though you might not know their story or might not be able to identify with it. Empathy is a wonderful skill that can be used in a business environment. The next one is compassion. There's a difference between empathy and compassion. Compassion really uh, is a step up from, from empathy and of sympathy because compassion actually is something that becomes part of who and what you are in your nature. Compassion is caring without a reason. It's just caring because you care as an individual for no reason at all, with no strings attached. That's pretty impressive. When you feel like somebody has compassion or empathizes with you, they become a friend to you. They become somebody you want to be in relationship with. I think these skills can, can be applied to the business environment. Are you a compassionate professional? Where have you learned these skills? Well, I think we learn these through our own lost stories. I think we're able to integrate them through what we've learned, how people have engaged us in the past, how we've engaged others and take them forward in our lives. We begin to now um, be able to form a language of engagement in our company, in our presentations, in our selling, in our marketing that's attractive to people coming in. We have lots of companies who have on their taglines, we're a caring company, or we're serving our customer, we'll do anything for you. Those are a dime a dozen. I see them all the time. But to actually create a culture of people who genuinely care and go the extra mile for people just because, with no strings attached, is a wonderful addition to your company culture. Let me give you a couple examples from my own life. I'm going to take you back a number of years ago to a situation that my wife Erica and I were involved with. 
You see, her dad was aging, and we get a phone call that he was close to death. You know, it's one of those famous phrases where, you know, you better get here before. And of course, we wanted to be with dad uh, during his dying days, but it was urgent that we get there. And so um, Erica booked a flight with an airline and took off that day immediately. As that day progressed, I said to myself, I need to get there too. I need to be there with Dad as well. And so I booked a flight to go out the next day early morning. Erica would have arrived uh, before me and I would arrive after And so I booked the flight. And I get to the airport that day, early in the morning, to go to Montreal. I go up to the counter uh, to check in. And they said, I'm sorry, sir. Um, You booked your flight for a month from now. I said, what? You, You know, in my haste, In my anxiousness, I had gotten the month wrong when I was trying to get my ticket. And now I was in a predicament, wasn't I? And I told them, I'm really sorry, but I need to get to Montreal. I said, my father-in-law is dying. I'd really appreciate it if you could do something for me. The nice lady at the counter went back and had a conversation with somebody else, came back to the counter and said, yes, sir, we can get you on that flight. Now, not only did they get me on that flight, but they got me on first class on that flight. They gave me something extra. The stewardess, or the steward on the Flight asked me how I was coping, knowing that I was going to be with Erica's dying father. You see what happened here? The compassion this company showed to me was extraordinary. Now let me take you to the Erica. Because Erica had left the day before, but somehow the flight that she was on, had a stop in Toronto and the flight was late and she didn't make her her connection. She would actually have to sleep the entire night and catch it the next morning to arrive there just a few hours before me. She went to the counter and said, look, my father's dying and I need to get on a flight tonight somehow. The reply was, I'm sorry, there's nothing available. No, we can't do that. You'll have to wait till tomorrow morning. You see the difference between empathy and compassion between these two airlines? Well, I'll tell you one thing right now. That unless we have no options, we don't lose, do you not use that airline that Erica flew on that time? The other airline we use as often as we can because of one experience, one loss experience that was recognized by one company who went the extra step to make us happy. It's powerful, this whole understanding of loss and how you as a company, you as employees, you as leaders can help engage people who are lost. Let let me be honest with you here. There are lost stories happening every day in your company and lost stories happening every day in your customers and clients. You don't know sometimes, but sometimes you can recognize it by asking the right questions. The right questionable care. 
They're about family, about how are you doing, what's happening in your life. You know, so often we begin our, our, our company product and service pitch without knowing anything about the relationship of the individual. It's not just, how's your day going? It could be a little bit deeper than that. And yeah, maybe some people don't want to reveal what's going on in their life, and maybe some others do. And the others that do, guarantee that you might have a customer for life if you've just taken a few minutes to have a listing here, to have empathy, and develop compassion. I'm not talking about fake compassion here. Real care that comes from the heart that's willing, actually, to give up a sale because the person is more important. I experienced that in my life. My second story here from a business perspective, because I've been in business all my life as well, and I was working for a company, and we were selling water equipment. This is a number of years ago. Water equipment to help companies develop bottled water stores, the huge bottled water market and the huge five-gallon containers using coolers. And that was a number of years ago now. But I'll never forget because I was in a sales position selling this equipment and marketing this wonderful water product and system. And it was very expensive. And there was a lot of competition. I spoke to a, a lady down in Toronto who wanted to open up a bottled water store. And I'll never forget it because she was very, uh, very hard to deal with because she was nickel and diming me, so to speak. She wanted a better price. And the other competitors were obviously giving her a better price all the time. It was very competitive, extremely competitive. So we go back and forth, back and forth. And then one day she phones. And I recognized a different tone uh, in her language. I recognized that something was going on in her life. She seemed a little bit sad. And I said to her, let's just make up her name, Mary. I said, are you okay? What's going on? That was it. She said, well, she said, yeah, I, I'm not doing too good. I said, just found out today that my dad has cancer and, and he's going in for an operation uh, in a couple of days. It's very serious, she said. And I said, oh, I'm really sorry. I said, you know, Mary, I said, this is not the time for us to talk about you setting up your bottled water store. I said, you go take care of your dad. I said, I'll hold these prices for you. But your dad is more important than a bottled water store right now. She said, thank you. And she hung up the phone. No. I could have wondered if I would ever give that Mary back as a potential client for me. At that point, it didn't matter to me because people are more important than any product or service. Well, let me tell you the end of the story. Two months later, she phoned. And it was a wonderful conversation. I said, how are you doing? How's your father? She said, my father's doing well. He made it through the, the surgery. He's recovering. He's doing really well. She said, I want to buy your system. I said, well, that's good news. She said, but I want to add on some more to that. I want this and this and this. And that $75,000 sale became a $160,000 sale. And she said to me, Rick, once I have this bottle of water store set up, I want to fly you in to be part of the opening. And I really want you to meet my dad. I really want you to meet my dad. Isn't it cool? You know, to, to, to show compassion, to be willing to let the sale go for the sake of the individual. You know, people are going through lost stories in their life all the time. And these 
personal law stories and what we've learned can become a part of our professional language, not just to say the right words, but to develop a heart for people, to think about them and what they're going through, to offer them a space if they need to, not as a counselor, but just as a caring human being, to be a compassionate professional. These lost stories help us also to manage our own loss and to minimize the impact of it upon our own mental health. Like I said, we go through lost stories. But if we can learn from them, if we put into place some of these resilient traits, we can use what we've had in the past to help us in the present as they come back to us. We can manage our loss. We need to be compassionate on ourselves. We need to show empathy to ourselves. We need to be able to say, I'm going to make it. I want to recognize this. I want to manage it. I'm not willing to allow this loss to swallow me up. I'm going to face whatever loss experience I have without fear. Because I have an honest and intentional plan. Filled with resilient factors that I've learned from the past. That I'm going to take forward in the present. To help me move forward in transition into the future. Loss does not have to stop us. If we experience and know how to grieve intentionally by what we've learned in the past, we can manage and move forward in joy. So here's three questions you can ask yourself to help you transition through your loss. And remember, as you learn this, you're actually developing skills in your own life that you can take forward professionally. Here's the questions I would ask when loss comes into my life. Where is this loss trying to take me? It's a good question because I don't want to go there. Loss always tries to take us in directions. And some of these directions are often emotional. When we go through loss, we can become sad. We become angry. We can be uh, filled with guilt over loss. And those three emotions are dangerous because they can impact yourself and they can impact others. Sadness can take us into sadder places. We can visit our sadness, but we have to say goodbye to it. Now, anger is part of loss. I mean, it's a normal reaction to something we've experienced, but that can impact those around us. They can hurt those around us. Guilt can take us to places we don't want to go either. Guilty over something that happened that was our fault or maybe it wasn't. But we feel guilty about something and, well, that's not fair because we beat up ourselves. Don't want to go there. We don't want to go there and we don't have to if we've recognized what we've done in the past that might help us in the future. So the second question is, what in my lost history is similar to that loss I'm going through, which I've gone through in the past, which I need to apply to this now, so let me move forward in my life. How can I use these skills that are now part of my life Recognize them as skills, things I've learned that can help me in my present situation in order to mitigate the intensity of the loss in order to transition through. What well, is a similar circumstance? might not be exactly the same, but there's some similarities in all of our lost circumstances, and we can apply those skills moving forward. And thirdly is, <clears throat> what have I learned in my own life about loss that I can take into my professional life? 
You know, we learn in our job environment how to do our job. We learn in our loss experience how to do loss. And now we have a toolkit that can be taken into the business environment as we engage clients, as we engage our customers as compassionate professionals. Take notice of your loss. Recognize that it's there. And use those experiences to develop skills as a professional, as a compassionate professional. Next week, I'm going to talk about taking advantage of our lost stories and building a loss-friendly culture. I'm going to get into some of the specifics of what these skills might look like for us and how we might use them forward. Soft skills, but I think really important for us to create this grief-loss-friendly culture that extends out to our customers and beyond where we really are a caring company and people know it and they see it and they experience. Thanks again for joining me. Again, I'm live from First Memorial Services in 4th Street in Victoria, BC. Thank you again for sponsoring this lecture to this fine funeral home. And if you need their services, you can give them a call at any time, 250 384 5512 or 250 658 5244. So until next week, goodbye and take care. See you soon. Bye bye.